and welcome today we're on horse reality and it's may the 19th which means that we have the release of the revised brabant horses on horse reality and it's not a breed that i'm really into but it is a very pretty breed i love the feathers on the feet it's a chonky breed and for anyone that's interested or does have anything to do with this breed on the game then yeah today you get a nice little update to the artwork which is always very good so i'm gonna hop off that it's, uh, very pretty not my not my breed but yeah good to look at anyway so i'm just gonna get rid of that and then we can focus on other news okay so um yeah i'm selling all of my fusions <laughs> yeah i never thought this would happen but I've decided to focus more on competitions rather than confirmation. Uh, I think that you do get more money going into competition than confirmation. I had some quite nice um, Frisians actually. I had a 10 very good that I'd bred. She has, he sorry, he sold. Uh, let me have a look here. Uh, where is it? Here we are, Dusk Raven. Now Dusk Raven has been renamed its new owner. And yeah, they looked very good there, had 10 very good, so yeah. Gonna miss Dante, it was called Dust Raven or something, but yeah, so Dust Raven's gone, and uh, I think it's the same person who's actually bidding on my other horses as well. Um, Frisians do go for quite a lot of money. Uh, if you look on the market here, there aren't a lot of Frisians on the market, so any good ones that come up, they go for quite a bit, and uh, yeah, so if you ever want to make a bit of money breeding horses, Frisians are pretty good. This one here, it's only got two very good, one average, one below average, and somebody's asking 180k for it. I don't know whether that will sell for that, but we will see. And I think it is, yeah, the same person, Luxy, here is breeding on my ones. I just decided that um, I was, wanted to focus more on my competition horses, which is, uh, let's go to my horses. So the, the, the Trekners and Oldenburgs and for confirmation I just want to focus on the Clad Rubers. I have quite a few Clad Rubers now. Um, I'm very proud of Tango Crown and Light Devil. If I have a little star next to their name, that means that they are fully trained up to Grand Prix. And I think I only have three horses that are at that level, which is Light Devil who doesn't compete, he's just confirmation. Uh, he's just literally, I think he has competed before with his old owners, as I did buy him, but I don't think he ever did that well by the looks of it. I think that 14 there was probably the highest he got. So yeah, he's just a confirmation horse and he does quite well in confirmations. He's got 16 day champions and he generally always comes in first premium. Now I have been breeding from him. And he has got quite a few little foals. Here we go. Look, a shadow of light. And I think other people have bought his services as well. He is open for stud. So he is a, a very good looking little boy. And we do have another clad ruber stallion that I quite like. He was only, he's a young boy. Tango Crown, he's uh, three years, eight months. So I've, I've reared him from when he was a foal. I think I bought him when he was a quite young foal. And as of yet, he does not have any offspring, but I have bred him with some of my mares. So there should be some of his foals coming soon. As for achievements, he's got had two day champions, bearing in mind he is quite young still. Um, you know, he averages quite well, actually. Uh, he doesn't do too bad. But yeah, confirmation doesn't really get you a lot of money, only if you get the day champion. And I kind of am more interested in the competition horses, so let's take a look at those. So I have these foals coming up soon. Uh, this one, Running Brook, is pretty much there with the training, I believe. Yeah, so that one's all ready to go, just need to get some tack. And this one will be ready to start competing as soon as it's trained up. And if we go back... I think I have some more. If they have BWS, that stands for Blackwater Stables, which is my sort of stable name. So anything with BWS is a horse or foal that I've bred myself. And anything that doesn't have BWS is a horse that I've bought. Um, so if we go into here, a lot of these are 
sport. Uh, uh, yeah, so Firefly and Moonlight both have the star, which means they are both fully trained in everything. So they're up to Grand Prix, so they have the star. And I'm hoping to get um, some of my other horses to that position. I think Bazinga, Bazinga Theory has really good um, chance of being really good in dressage. 93, 99, 99 in dressage. If you're wondering where those numbers come from, it's in the genetics here. So for um, dressage, Agility, balance, and strength are the numbers you need to be looking for. And as you can see, it's 93, 99, 99. You would um, add those three numbers together and you'd get a score, which is dressage 291 for Zynga Theory, which is pretty good. Not bad at all. If we look at, oh, I keep clicking on the wrong one. If we look at my best horse at the moment, Firefly, she's dressage 284. So I think Bazinga Fury does stand a chance of coming along quite well in, in that um, dressage. If we look at her achievements so far. See what I've been doing with her is leveling her up and then competing to see where she's at. So these sort of like high, low, well, low scores here, that would be when she's in training. And I've decided not to really compete them while I'm training and then wait and then compete them once they're done. And how is she doing? She is on first level at the moment, so she's still got a little way to go. So I could actually probably do this and get her going a bit further. I need to go through all my horses and, and do their training. I do it religiously. Every single day I log on and I will go through all of my foals and all of the competing horses because you have to keep um, your competition horses physical fitness up, which you don't have to do with confirmation horses. Um, confirmation horses you don't need to keep their physical fitness up you can just whack a halter on them and I do recommend putting a halter on them because it does affect their um, results so you always want to put a little uh, halter on but you don't have to keep their physical fitness up I do tend to try to because um, the OCD in me wants to have all my horses at the peak physical fitness and keeping up with their training even though it doesn't training does not matter at all on confirmation horses either but I just do it anyway because I like to have my horses all healthy and looking good and looked after <laughs> which is weird as I don't need to and it's a total waste of time for me but that's just something I do um, but the competition horses here yeah you want to keep their physical fitness up so I log on every day keep up with their training uh, two studs that I have here. Dividing Whispers is my newest stud and yeah he's doing quite well. I think where's his score up here? 96, 98, 95, 289. So he has potential to do quite well in dressage I think. Hopefully. So we'll just do a little bit of training on him as well and get him going. Has he even competed yet? I think he did. No I haven't even competed with him yet. I think I'm just waiting for his yeah training level to... So he's nearly there, he's got this and then those two to go and then he can start competing. And I'll probably do like a couple of rounds with him and then go on to the next level because I want them to get to Grand Prix as quickly as I can get them and it takes forever. Literally takes forever. So I'm just going to enter a couple of horses in here now. So Firefly... Uh, it sometimes does this where it kind of freezes so I'll just wait a couple of seconds. But yeah, I, I try and um, mainly enter them into competitions kind of late at night because then everyone's asleep and you can do a lot better <laughs> and earn a lot of money. So we'll just enter the ones that are able to be entered. These ones are all in training so there is really no point in entering any of those. Um, if we go to results and see how they have done. So nothing for reason in the sun. Moonlight came first. Don't know why Firefly is so low there. Normally Firefly is above Moonlight, but you know, it's all kind of RNG. Royal Star is actually Firefly's grandson. I do know that. So let's have a little look. Yeah, there we go, let Firefly. And Royal Star normally does quite well. So let's do a little bit of show jumping as well. I think I've only got one horse, Dream Pioneer, who I can enter because the rest are in training. So we'll just wait for that to load and see how Dream Pioneer does. 
So yeah, as you can see, I'm getting into Oldenburg as well, so hmm. a new breed I've started. So Dream Pioneer hasn't done too well, that's fine. It's all a little bit RNG in the um, show jumping as well, sometimes. Um, so let's have a look at Oldenburgs. Oldenburgs, I've got three horses at the moment. Classy Gal, very pretty, do love the coloration. I don't breed for coat colours at all. I don't care what colour the coats are. It's always nice to get a pretty horse, but I generally do not breed for coat colours or anything like that. I'm really just breeding for stats. Stats to earn the, the money, basically. <laughs> Stats to earn winners, not colours. Colours don't make winners. <laughs> uh, they make them more desirable when you're selling them, of course. People want a nice pretty horse, but I really do not care what the horse looks like. I just, you know, I'm breeding for those numbers, basically. Um, where, are, where else are we at? So yeah, we were looking at Oldenburg. Didn't we? So Dream Dynasty, I believe, is class of gals. Offspring? Oh, no, 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 wrong bit. There we are. Oh no, Dream Pioneer. Oh wow, you look a lot like Classy Girl. So Dream Pioneer's uh, Dream Dynasty's mother or dam. So if we go into back here, oh, I wish you could just go back and you would go back to the stable block you were in. Uh, it's just a bit annoying. Sometimes it's a little bit of roundabout way of working your way around this website. Oh, well, I just need to do this as well. Always need to keep up on your... Uh, Riding school jobs, keep your money coming. <laughs> oh, and while I'm here, I might as well do the vet checks. Okay, so we'll just do this for everyone. And we're not going to geld anyone. I'm going to collect all our samples. Okay, oh, well, let's have a look at our inventory. Not inventory, freezer. Here we go. Okay, so I still have some stallion samples going on from the Frisians. Hopefully it gets to a point where I can sell these because that would be really great. And I have a notification. Let's check the notification. Oh, it won't let me. Okay, whatever. So, um, moving on to Cloud Aruba block. Um, we've had a, look, a little look at these. But, basically, I'm pretty happy with how this is going. I think I bred one very good foal and I'm trying to remember which one it is it might be I think it might be heart shaped box is it heart shaped box? no one of them had 11 very good and I'm going to just quickly find it is it light in the dark? no which one is it? see how see what I mean about this um, when you go back not any of those shadow of light shadow of light yeah, this is the one I was quite sad about this because it had 11 very good, but then zero good and one average. Oh no, it ruined it. That was my first 11 very good clad Ruba that I've bred. i uh, got day champion once so far. So that average is just letting it down at 11 very good to one average. I was very sad about that. Wish it was just a good, that would have been brilliant, but I will be keeping this as a stud. Um, so yeah, going to definitely keep that one. Hopefully it will do quite well. And breed some nice foals, maybe with 11 uh, very goods and one good would be great. But we'll see how that goes. As for the other foals, let's have a look at the Clad Reba foal block. Yeah, so I've got um, a 10 very good here and two good Brink Kiss and another one here. So I would obviously be looking at breeding these two with my 11 very good that I've just bred. Trying not to inbreed as much as I can. I don't think I have overly inbred, maybe accidentally um, you know, through somewhere through the lineage, had a grandparent maybe in common a couple of times. But I try not to do that, but I don't think it becomes too much of a problem unless you do it like, you know, mothers and sons and things. But I don't think the game is going to punish you too hard. I don't know. Maybe it does. But for me at the moment, it's not a problem. I know that some people do run into problems with having to uh, bring in fresh blood because um, the inbreeding gets you know pretty heavy so yeah that's where I'm at, at the moment so um, one two three 
three different types of breed. Now, because I've just sold all my Frisians, I'm kind of thinking I want to start a new breed and I want it to be a competition breed or I might invest more into Oldenburgs. So if any of you have any ideas on what other breeds are good for competition, and I don't I don't care what type of competition it can be. I mainly do dressage and show jumping, but if any of you know like I'm guessing for Western it would be um court horses. And I do love how the court horses look, but I don't want to go into confirmation court horses. I want to do competition. So if any of you know like how to get into court horse um, for competition, what stats I need to be looking at, let me know in the description. Although I have got my little bit of paper which tells you what stats you need to be looking for. But yeah, I was thinking maybe court horses. I don't really know what other horse breed to get into. But Frisians were not really doing it for me. And the reason I decided to quit Frisians was because the competition was very heavy. I was barely winning anything. I think I had one um, one mare that had like 21 day champions. And you know, that was only because I ended it like really late at night. If we go into the confirmation, I bet you can see what I mean. So, heavily dominated. Heavily dominated. If it's not um, one person, it's another um, sort of dom always dominating. You see like it's the same like name and if it's not like this person it'll be another person who heavily specializes in in regions and you never really get anywhere you'd, you'd always be somewhere at the bottom unless it's really late at night and then you could grab a, a day champion if you're lucky and you know that you could get 500 which is not a lot or maybe some tokens um and it just doesn't seem worth it for the amount it costs to enter the horse enter all of your horses the um, rewards from it it just it isn't worth it at all for me so that's why i decided to drop regions i do a lot better in confirmation with um clad rubers clad rubers um i'm tending to do a lot better with, so i've decided to stick with them we could probably enter some of our clad rubers let's do you know this time of day is probably not the best time of day to do this because there's quite a lot of users online a lot more competition and you see what I mean? Like you're, you're entering all these horses, and one of them has the potential to get day champion. So all of these horses that you're entering, like you're really not making much money back, and that's no real way to make a lot of money. So I would definitely say that confirmation for me is is something more for fun. It's more of a oh you know I'm trying to get um, some very good um, stats here. But you know, I'm I'm I can't see myself getting very rich doing just confirmation. So for me, the the main interest is competition. That's what I'm trying to go into. Yeah, so not not too bad. Day champion went to someone else. Yeah, you know, see, see what I mean? Like I vented all these horses and it's costed a lot of money. And even though oh, let me just refresh because that one hasn't placed. Okay, so. You know, even here where I got third place in competition, you would get some money for that. But in confirmation, you only get anything at all if you get that first position, day champion. This little ribbon here is the only thing that's going to earn money out of all of these horses that everyone's entered and the money that it costs to enter them. See, it, it's just a for fun thing. Whereas if we go over here to competitions, so this horse will have earned some money, this horse and this horse, and all of these different uh, levels, first, second and third, will all earn some money. And if you get to Grand Prix, like Moonlight here, if she manages to keep that position, she will get like 5k compared to 500 for a day champion. So you can really see where I'm coming from in regard to wanting to go more into competition. now. I think on the Discord, I maybe read something about perhaps they were going to be revamping the confirmation uh, rewards. Now, if they do that, which I do think they need to do, then that would be a great, great idea to make it more worthwhile for people. Because, yeah, the, the, the rewards are not great for confirmation, I have to say, I've noticed. And it's probably time for me to visit the vet again. Not the vet, the riding school. Oh no, it isn't. 
Can I? Yes, I can. <laughs> Religiously got to do that as well. So yeah, that's where we're at right now. We are welcoming the new artwork and selling all of my regions and deciding what I'm going to be doing in regard to maybe investing more in Oldenburgs or a new breed. So yeah, next time I will probably give an update on what I decided to do. If you guys want to help make a decision as to what horses to go into for competition, not confirmation, then yeah, throw me your opinions or, or whatever's worked for you or what horses you think are good for competition. So yeah, that's it for today. Thank you for watching my little horse reality video. Take care and bye-bye.